my god, once again, you didn't ask for this, but here we are. I'm MB Elkins. And I'm Joe Steele, and, and this is MB and J Movie Madness. Yes, we are, and today mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about those amazing scores. Yes. Amazing scores by those composers that we love so much. But here's the thing sometimes movies out there have some amazing music material. Mm hmm. To some really horrible movies. Bad movies. So we came up with a list of five each of movies that soundtrack and score is better than the movie itself. Now, mics are a little bit more obscure. Very obscure. Mine are a lot more mainstream, which might yeah. create some... Controversy. Controversy, which I'm okay with. And I'd love okay you to you to throw your controversy in the comments yes. because I'm all about this, brah. People will know some of my movies and other people may yeah. not. So okay. It's just for those trolls out there that like obscure cinema. <laughs> Yours are all like the mainstream. famous mainstream and, stuff. And let's talk about the biggest mainstream thing right now. I'll start with my first one. What is it? Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace. It's a terrible movie. The movie is... Ew. It's probably the better of the prequels. Like, okay. I don't like the Wait, one at all. Wait, what? I don't like... Okay, no, stop. It's better of, I look at one and three, three being a little bit better than one, and I don't like two. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, yeah. I, I don't like one and two at all. I'll, I'll watch three. Yeah, so anyways, yeah. Okay. Fate of the, uh, Duel of the Fates, that song is, like, super iconic. And it's okay. during that epic lightsaber fight. If the movie, like, could embrace that moment. You should tell them who the composer is. John Williams. Okay, cool. Just My favorite. People up here don't know. Well, if you don't know who John Williams is, you need to go look up everything John Williams, and you'll realize I've seen every movie. Yes. Uh, it's just easy. You're right. All right, yeah. what's yours? Well, we're gonna stay on John Williams. Okay. Because one of my favorite John Williams scores, believe it or not, World, uh, just happens to be not Jaws one, but Jaws two. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Look at this. I actually have it right oh! here. Jaws 2 by John Williams, Unbl the score. Oh. Listen, he's going to disagree with me. I will. No, Jaws the original is a fabulous classic score. But I'm going to argue right now that Jaws 2's music, what John Williams did in this one, went um, so many different places than what the first one did. The second one has so many different little pieces, like the menu, which is like the yeah. fun little beach sound theme. Uh, Finding the Orca in the Mini is this big, grandiose musical piece. Yeah. Uh, not all of it is horror. A lot of it feels adventure and whimsical. Well, I will, and I, and I agree with you on that fact that it does go in places that the other one doesn't go. But what I say is the first one perfects what it does. And I will agree with because, that. Because, like, those elements, like, just... When they're chasing down the shark with the buoy in the first one, and you're like, yes. feeling, and it feels so adventurous. It is but adventurous. It's very fulfilling. Yes. I think both scores have a horror element, yeah. but also an adventure element. This one yeah. features a lighthearted, whimsical yeah. little element to it with the beach stuff. Now, of course, uh, this movie is not nearly as good as the original Jaws, mm -hmm. but its soundtrack is amazing. I agree. I definitely one. agree. Okay, next one on my list is actually... This is a movie you haven't seen. What I is it? Movie. Huh? Madagascar, Escape to Africa. And the sequel. that's why I haven't seen it. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> it's funny. Funny story. First Bonk. Madagascar, I don't remember. Like, I saw it in theaters, but I saw it. My mom was sitting in front of me and my girlfriend at the time, and I didn't watch much of the movie. <clears throat> Bad joke. Anyways, the second one, I went to go see with my nephews. Okay. And I was like, I remember some of the music, but then I just went and saw Sport Hans Zimmer. I saw him in concert. Okay. And he played that track live, and I went, this is really good. Why is he playing this song? It, like, it's from some uh, such an obscure movie. And then I watched the movie again and went, wait, okay, this movie is crap. But that yeah. music is incredible. And it's not the Will, um, Will I Am music, because he does a couple things in it. But, I mean, okay. Hans Zimmer stuff. Ah. Especially Rescue Me, it's fun. There's okay. a bass line, it's catchy, I don't know, I just love it. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. You like silly cartoon music. Moving on. It's not silly. <laughs> Shut your crap. All right. I'm going to... Uh, my second choice is staying in the same genre. Not only the same genre, but in the same collection of films. Yes. I love the score to Jaws 3 by just... Alan Parker. Jaws now, 4 is not on this, by the way. I'm never going <laughs> to speak. We already complained about that movie in a previous segment. Now, Jaws 3, it is a very campy. It's a very cheesy. It's not a good movie. If you grew up with yeah. it like I did, it's silly and it's fun for laughs. It's Dennis Quaid's one of his first pictures. Moving on. Yeah, Alan yeah. Parker's score in that movie is pretty darn awesome. Well, especially his the theme part. theme alone to the SeaWorld 
the mm -hmm. whole world of that. It makes you feel like you want to go to like Disneyland. Absolutely. You want to go to a theme park. And it has its good adventurous and thriller horror aspects to it, the second half of the movie. But that theme alone, uh, I grew up with, and me and my brothers both adore that theme. And that's why Jaws 3 to me, the soundtrack, has such an amazing, amazing crisp score. Why do I feel like I'm Donald Trump right now? It's, it's going to be great. Moving on. What's okay, the third? Okay, okay. Well, I'm about to do another big series because I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. So I'm accepting the fact that I'm a nerd. Well, here on. he did Star Wars. So and then, I guess so now this he's one is. Do Star I am. Trek. I'm going to do Star Trek, the motion picture, the uh, classic one. The first one. You know who did the music for that? No. Jerry Goldsmith. I love Jerry Goldsmith. Absolutely. The movie is more of a music video than it is anything else. Talking about Jerry Goldsmith, he's the one composer back when he was alive that everyone said, hey, any movie that you do, your music's going to be better than the movie that you're actually making it Yeah, for. that's normally the way it is. This movie is like, they were like, let's take the TV show and make a movie. Mm -hmm. And they were like, okay, but you only had. They made it like 50 minutes of content, but yeah. they extended it for two hours. I see. So the pacing is so rough, but the okay. music is just gorgeous. Like there's scenes where it's just literally 10 minutes of no talking of them just going down a tunnel oh. with just music. And the music is awesome. You know what? I own that movie, but never watched it. Oh, well. I have all of them, but I just never You love Jerry? If you ever want to listen to Goldsmith, just turn it on and you'll hear more music when you will talk. I'm down for that. My number three is a... Uh, movie from the early 90s that is by composer Elmer Bernstein. Elmer Bernstein yeah. did um, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Ooh, very good. Yeah, very, very good. And he did a little thriller called The Good Son with <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. He was and, the, and it was the killer Wood. kid movie. It was kind of like a remake of Bad Seed. Yep. Macaulay Culkin was like, hey, I don't want to just be known for Home Alone. I want to be a bad kid too. So it's him and Elijah Wood kind of having a battle of wits. And um, it was just kind of an okay movie. It's not a bad movie, no. but it's music will bring tears to your Absolutely. eyes, I guarantee it. It has this very sentimental home feeling. It does not sound like a thriller at all. You listen to this music and it sounds like you're watching like a very um, melodramatic movie about maybe someone dying or yeah. something. No, totally. And it's, totally. it's, a, it's, it's, it's uh, I actually don't have words for it. That That's, wow. It that's, makes me cry. That's amazing. Elmer Bernstein scored a good son makes me cry. What's your four? All right, I'm going to stick with the nerd stuff. But this is not really... It, it tried to be mainstream, but it didn't... It didn't. Oblivion. I have no problem with Oblivion. I, it's okay. To me, okay. but the music by M83, it's yes. just super big and epic and then empty at the same time, just the way he did mm -hmm. everything. And he's one of those few people that, like, when he got it, it was amazing. Like, okay. Daft Punk with Tron. That's another one I could have put on the list. That, I love really the good. electronic scores that those movies and then, have. And um, they... Fill with the cinematography. Yes, and then the Chemical Brothers who did Hannah. Like yes. those are all examples, but this one specifically, mm -hmm. I just couldn't. It was a sci-fi that just didn't grab me and be loving sci-fi. But like, the music. The did. amount that you love horror is the amount I love sci-fi, yeah. and in it, it, it didn't. The music, okay. I was like, I own the the soundtrack, but I don't, I don't own the movie. Speaking of horror, my number four is probably one of my favorite old 1970s. Uh, horror, scary movie scores of all time. This is a it's, fun movie. And it's an obscure movie. Uh, most people who grew up on 70s and 80s monster movies, you'd probably know it. Prophecy <gasps> the Monster Movie, which is that movie yeah. about the inside-out, caramel cover looking grizzly bear <laughs> that's running around attacking all the uh, people in the forest. Yep. Now, that movie has really shoddy effects, and yeah. it's really silly for its time. It's yep. a movie I'd love to remake if I ever... I'm, you know, who I want to be in the future, a filmmaker. You, I want to make my original prophecy. You will. Point is, you know what I would do? What? Leonard Roseman's score to that movie, I would get permission just to use it again. That's perfect. I love the score. It is creepy. It's atmospheric. It oh, is yeah. scary That's as really hell. It's, it's, it's very... Um, energetic. It's it is. It, the whole second half of that movie is a chase movie. Oh, yeah. These people are getting chased by this bear across a lake and... and, 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 and I and, love and, the and lake. Cabin. It's, it's, it just keeps going. It's so Chasing awesome. them and chasing them and chasing them. And the music works. It does. The movie itself and the effects doesn't. Nope. But the music works. I agree. Prophecy. All right, so I'm going to stick in the nerd vein here. For your last one? For my last one. And, okay. I mean, everyone loves the Lord of the Rings movies. Or do we? can at least admire what they did. I do admire them, but they're, I prefer Harry Potter. They're epics. They're super epics. The original three. They are. <coughs> so, but I'm not going to talk. The Hobbit series. That's what I'm going to talk about. There's some music in The Hobbits that are really good, but the movies themselves could have been one movie. Yeah. Or maybe... Two two hour movies, not, not three, three three hour movies. No, they weren't needed. Yeah. The five hours of that movie is who composed those? Um, same guy. It was Howard Shore. Howard Shore did them, okay. and he's amazing. And I really like what he does with a lot of the 
it feels very childlike with a lot of the stuff when he mm -hmm. films the the uh, the dwarfs or not the dwarf yeah the dwarfs going with the Hobbit and like a lot of the times when they're sneaking around it feels very just fun. It's okay. very, very childlike at times. It has a whimsy to it. But then there's those intense moments when you start seeing the orcs and all that stuff, and he, he brings it in. Okay. A lot of the same themes. Gandalf has the same themes. There's still the overhead Lord of the Rings theme, which keeps it in the niche. But the music was so much better than the movie. See, when I watch those, I don't... It, it's the, the music is so... It's not that memorable to me. Huh. So I'd have to revisit you them. Sh you should revisit them. I should revisit them. You should. My final one is sticking in the monster territory. Mm -hmm. Now... King Kong is one of the most famous monsters no. of all time. Oh, yeah. And that character has some good movies and, and he has some, some really bad movies. Terrible movies. And one of the worst movies that features King Kong was the 1980s King Kong Lives yeah, starring Linda King Hamilton. Holy crap, that was a bad movie. <laughs> it's bad. It has Lady Kong coming in and the military <laughs> trying to stop him. But you know what was good about that movie? What? The more obscure uh, uh, composer named John Scott put together a very, very fine uh, piece of music. For that, I've for that. heard you use it in a lot of your stuff. I have. I've used it in the background some I of really my like plays. It. it is very sentimental, and it pulls at the heartstrings. And when you, if I play it for somebody, they would never suspect that, that this was... is from a King Kong movie. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's why I love it. Music that doesn't feel like it's from this crappy '80s yeah. sci-fi monster movie, but something that stands out alone. The music deserves to be better. It deserves more than. King Kong lives. Yeah, In fact, no, all I'm, of these movies, I'm absolutely. saying, deserve more than what they got. Than what they absolutely. are stuck inside. I agree, hundred you know? percent. And that's our list. That's our list. Thank you so much for tolerating and watching us yet again. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't bicker as much as last time. Screw you. You know what? I hate you too. Just eat that. So this is like hit the subscribe button and watch what what that was good. And and keep up with it. Thank yeah. you. Okay, bye. Rolling, audio is rolling. Tres, dos. I did dos. I did dos. Yeah. Dos. Yeah, dos. Uno! I don't know your Italian, so stop it. Fee. I want to. We're white. We're going to talk. You're. Stop it. Okay, here we go. Ah. And meh.